What's going on, everybody? Hey, how's Axel it going? Gnome here. JP, the armored chef. We are in JP's bunker tonight <laughs> instead of being separated, me at my house and in the bunker. So yeah, we're, yeah, we're in my both studio. You make it sound almost nefarious when you call it a bunker. But anyway, hey, we got two very fucking special guests for you tonight. Uh, we have, as we're doing this live here, we have the Marine rapper back, uh, very excited for that, and Topher here. And they're here to kind of talk about the, the, the song burning up the charts and all the uh, bullshit they've had to had the face here so uh guys we'll go ahead and let them uh go ahead and talk about it what's going on everybody i'm topher um for those who don't know me i'm topher town music on across all social media i'm a big political activist uh, conservative tiktok star billboard chart and artist and air force veteran um that's a mouthful but for the most part i'm just a regular guy that just loves america and we'll defend America and everyone's right to celebrate and live here. Yo, and what's up? I'm the Marine Rapper. I'm a 10-year Marine Corps uh, combat veteran of Iraq and Afghanistan. I do a lot of different battle rap type of things. I'm a billboard charting artist, and uh, I make lots of music with my homeboy Topher right here. Let's get it. Yeah. That's awesome, guys. And... um well, right off the bat here, let's. let's I, I kind of want to jump into the fact that you, you've been dealing with some major bumps here, especially on the with the conservative side and getting kind of kind of the, uh, the the mark of the MAGA. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's, it's been wild, man. You know, uh, I was telling Timmer, you know, I was just trying to make some dope music like we always have, and next thing you know, we became a whole. I guess sacrifice <laughs> you know and um which has been good so I, I i praise it and it sucks right because we made a great song we was on our way we was, like you said blazing billboard blazing all the charts but at the same time i'm glad it picked somebody that wasn't gonna bow down right i'm glad that i was chosen compared to other people um to face this type of uh injustice and suppression because I'm going to strike back. I'm going to swing back. And that's what we are doing. Um, we're not giving up. Uh, instead of trying to go around, we're going to go through. You know, we're going to go over, um, take it back, some of the ownership. And hopefully this starts a movement, which I've already seen it happening because we have so many remixes, so many people coming from across the aisle saying, hey, man, regardless of political views, this is just wrong. Right. Because um, once you start controlling and suppressing a certain part of the culture, specifically arts, which I say is the most sacred part of any society. Once you start um, controlling that and um, you run into a lot of uh, bad issues and nothing good comes from that. So I'm hoping with us making a lot of noise about it, um, people wake up and see that, you know, we're going down the wrong path right now as a country and we need to go ahead and turn back. You guys are definitely making a name like before you had come on i was talking to uh tamara there and you guys definitely have blown up just this week because i remember watching and seeing that you guys had come off and were taken down and just this week alone it watching you guys on instagram because i got rid of facebook because i got banned too many times (laughs) and well you know it's one of the things that shows that too like the mark of like talent like it's one thing we're like like talent will kind of override a lot of bullshit because, I mean, right off the bat, you guys kind of committed the cardinal sin of the entertainment industry, which is not not you I mean to, to to not bow down to to whatever like the the, the, the left the left stuff there. Yeah. Um. And that actually, it's a. I know uh, Marine Rapper remembers this probably from last time we were on. Like we always do a cocktail, so actually I mix. That's so what you saw me. I think he was laughing when I kept saw me grabbing different bottles there. Yeah. I'm actually we're we're doing the America and and uh, and and uh, suppression kind of combo here. So he's having a Budweiser because America, and then I'm actually making the final word, which is a pre. It's a it's a prohibition cocktail. It was something made during during oppression since you know we're dealing with that stuff. But with your permission, what I wanted to do actually for everybody real quick was actually play your track. And if so, you guys don't mind, if we play the actual song. So everybody can kind of hear it. We were just going to chill for a second. Let, so the, no the people, so the people that don't know it, I'm going to run that right now. So so folks, uh, j- just uh, for the Daddy Brigade premiere, <laughs> this is going to be uh, Topher uh, the, the Patriot featuring the Marine rapper. So yep. check this out. Great fucking track. Thousands 
on my right, thousands by my side. War between good and evil, watching our fists collide. Battle for our freedom now, to the streets we ride. Flags waving all around, pages full of pride. This is where we make a stand, no more give or take. March around the capital, storm the city gates. Putting pressure on their necks until the truth breaks. All walls of corruption, take out all the snakes. Star Spangled Banner, got a plan loud and proud. People from all walks of life, filling up the crowd. Defend the Constitution, many warriors avowed. Casting down any among us who have bucked and cow. Enough with tyranny, we come to take our country back. For all citizens, white, red, brown, or black. Return her to a form of glory, fix their bloody crack. On the crown, fetch it down, it's going down. Told me, yeah, she warned me that this day would come. I'm like my father, go to combat with the blazing guns. I survived that, then I came back to the place I'm from to face off all these haters and the battle in the place I love. You can't break me down, I'm indivisible. You still see my raps if I was invisible. But I'm standing tall, and I spit the truth. So you all appalled, cause you know it's true. They call it freedom, cause the fallen truths pay for this. I love this country, doesn't matter how much hate I get. I take my colors in the battle, ain't no wavering, cause this is for my warriors who march into the cadences. This is for the sisters working hard on the ship. This is for the brothers getting y'all Dr. Red Father. Yeah, taking y'all on the ship. Baby, tell me why it's off of the Patriot. That was the Patriot by Topher with the Marine Rapper. Awesome song. And you know, right off the bat, first I'm just gonna nerd out for a second from a music standpoint and say that I love the combination, like like especially like on the hook there, how you guys like it, you have like almost like a revolutionary war feel to like the like the, the, the hook section of that, but with obviously such a fucking hard hitting contemporary vibe on it all at once, that's like that that is a fucking fantastic song. So just let's start there and then just tell us more about it. <laughs> He's more of a music guy than me. Yeah, I I, I mean I've been, I, I've been he produ- he actually <laughs> produces been, been, and plays in bands and all kind of yeah, stuff. I, so I, oh I, yeah, oh. I've been I've been performing like live on stages since I was like thirteen, and I like said right. we're actually this is the you can like, I have it set up where you probably can see the least amount of shit possible right now, but we are in a studio with about fifteen guitars and basses and keyboards and all that shit is. <laughs> Yeah, I see the I see the soundproofing and stuff. Yeah, there's uh, yeah. at least ten guitars behind me. Yeah, so that's that's this is uh my this is the little studio dungeon that I, I actually have. I mean, I had one the last time I was in a band that I was trying. We actually had a little bit of radio play that came right out of this little fucking room. But nothing like hey, right now it's all about you guys. Yeah, Fuck, but, I'm gonna <laughs> shut up. I wanna, no, but that's cool. We'd like to hear about other people too, so that's cool. Hey, nah, but yeah, but I, right now I want to hear I want to hear about. So tell me about the song first off, like where like where it came from and and everything you can. So. It originated from TikTok. You know, this TikTok seems to be the place to go for new hit songs. I'm, it is what it is. Um, I don't create the rules. I just, I just play. Damn by. social media. Yeah. So um, Natty Dread is the one singing the hook, and she actually is from Scotland. Okay. So she she went viral on TikTok, like uber viral. Like, I think the video has like close to a million likes. So oh, wow. Imagine that. But uh, she was singing the hook just a acapella, you know, and and everyone that heard it was super hooked to it. And I was, and I got hooked to it. And I was like, man, you know, I've always wanted to sample vocals. I've never done so because of copyright issues. But I knew yeah. her song, you know, wouldn't have any copyright issues. And it was from her. Right. And it was beautiful. So I was like, this should be easy to do. So I asked her permission. She said, absolutely, you can use my vocals. So then I sent it to my, my man. Well, actually, I posted and said, hey, any producers want to work with me, please flip this song. And then Killavik, who's also a Marine veteran, yeah. um, hit me up. I've worked with him in the past, you know, a couple projects here and there. He hit me up. He said, hey, man, I already flipped it for you. I'm sending it to you tonight. He sent it to me. <laughs> I got to write now. I was so impressed by it. I got to write that night. And then me and him spent the next 
actually the next day we couldn't work on it because he had emergency at work but the next day after that we spent majority of that time you know bringing it together getting it fixed how we want it back and forth and then that's when i sent it to timmer and um of course, I was like, "There's no one more patriotic than the guy wearing an American flag jacket." So, yeah. <laughs> no, that I, ja- that jacket is badass. Are you actually going to retire that jacket? <laughs> oh no! So just to let you know, I do retire them. Um, I just haven't retired this one just yet, specifically because we were shooting the video and stuff like that. Hey, but yeah, I, I do. I do retire them. I have multiple. Oh, okay. Because so I, I see, I see you had said, I seen yeah. you had said on Instagram that you were going to retire the jacket, and I was like, no, not that oh, that's jacket. True. That's true. That's oh. true. Yeah, no. So I'll retire it, but I'll, I'll always come out with something new. But I like the emphasis being on like the lyrics because that's just like what my thing. Oh, absolutely. Lyrics. But uh, yeah, no, like I'll, I'll retire it or whatever, and I don't know, maybe we might do something special in the future. But well, yeah, we'll do that. But all- yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful that uh, Topher reached out to me because I will actually uh, a lot of people don't know I was about to go to sleep. Just to be honest, I was about to go to sleep. Just over. I was tired. No, it, he hit me up. It was late at night. I wanted to go to sleep, oh. and for some reason, the guy on my shoulders like, "You do not want to go to sleep. For some reason, this is going to be a banger. Record just, right now. Just hang like, out okay. for a second. <laughs> Yeah, hang out for a second. Don't overthink it. Just say what's on your mind and send it back to him. And then uh, I think it was like 3 o'clock over his time or whatever. He's probably like, ah, oh, he ain't going to send it or whatever. And it, it pinged like a 303 or something like that, like at the at the wire. You know what I mean? Shit. And he was like, what? And then he sent it over to the <laughs> – he immediately sent it over to the mixer. And uh, and that was it. Pretty much we had like uh, – like I think we had one, like one edit, one or two edits or whatever. And then Topher put it up. Like ASAP, put it up on YouTube with the lyric video. It has lyric video is about to hit a million. It has like half a million right now, over well, half a million. You've got at uh, least ten plays from me, probably in the last two days. <laughs> and we want to note too. We want to note too. The video is not even out yet. It's about to be, but the video we don't even have a video, and we beat out a whole bunch of people on Billboard with videos. Yeah, with see, labels. Now, see, I, I would say you were talking about retiring it there. Until, uh, have you guys done the video yet, or is the video like in the works right now, or what's what's the deal there? It's done. It's, it's done. done. All right. See, at least until the video is dropped, and sh- you got to keep the, the. Especially, I'm assuming that's the video that's going to be in the video, right? Yeah, jacket. For sure. yeah, the jacket. It was right. it, the, so, the flag jacket's in the video. Yes, yes. you need. To probably, <laughs> it has to be. It's, it's Patriot. You, you like, <laughs> yeah, you got to have at least probably one public appearance at post video before you can retire it. It's just just my, my you know two cents there. <laughs> You actually, okay. need, just we, I, I mean, we need we need we need to get Donald Trump on this. Like we uh, gotta we gotta send this to Donald can Trump. Any, can anyone get a hold of the the, the, the Don up and down in Mar Mar a Lago? There, I can't fucking talk. I'm pretty sure he's free. He doesn't uh, yeah, want to do anything. I, I, he might be free. Hey, you know, like, now that he's not pretty president sure he's good anymore, to go. He, I mean, <laughs> yeah, he'll, 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 he'll now that he's not president anymore, he'll probably go on Howard or something instead. He doesn't give a shit about us. But it's, and he likes us. He likes us 100%, nice. and he knows us, too. I would think so. Of course he does, yeah. Here, real quick here, just for the audience, sir, since I did mention this before, if you're playing at home with the uh, getting drunk with with uh, JP, um, the, the final word here is equal parts. I did one part. Uh, it's a, an ounce each of lemon juice. It's usually chartreuse. I used fucking absinthe because I'm a baller. And uh, <laughs> uh, Luxardo maraschino liqueur, and uh, I used bourbon instead of rye because that's just how I roll in more marca. <laughs> Hey, Topher, I meant to ask you, I'm sorry, I meant to ask you, don't mind, I know you're very big, you were labeled Christian on the one post that I shared, I don't want to offend you if I use bad language, I meant to ask you that before we started, I'm sorry. I I was offended for being asked to come on here, so you Uh, Oh, well, damn. (laughs) Shit. Like, I'm offended, I'm actually offended that you're offended, so... (laughs) Now, hey, well, honestly, honestly, we, we are legit honored to, to have you on, and and again, we want to do anything we can to help help get your word out there. Um, I mean, it, it truly sucks the way you've been treated with a lot of the stuff, and I love that kind of the, the people are speaking, so to speak, and actually being like, hey, you, again, the, the the cardinal the cardinal sin of uh, of the entertainment industry is is to is to is to be conservative or anything that's not kind of the. Uh, the, the, the line of the left there so right and i told people it's not really about morality at this point it's just really about money because if you got a guy who's teaching dignity and self-respect and his music people are going to tend to be less sexualized they're going to sexualize themselves less which means if you know sex sales so if they sexualize themselves less that mean less money less uh sales then you're going to be mad at that guy right especially if he's blazing the charts 
that means now everyone's listening to them and going to be paying attention to them. So I think it was more of that cultural battle that we're engaging in now um, when it comes to our society. And when they see that, they don't see a conservative guy. It just happened. That's just my label. I could be libertarian and still have the same thing. wouldn't matter. Um, but if they see a guy that's promoting values that's going to you know, mess up their base. And whenever you start messing with somebody's base, then, you know, they come to attack you. And that's, I, I believe truly that's where, you know, where we're heading and that's what ended up happening to us. And the reason why our song got pulled, because once again, it was not, you know, a copyright issue. Anyone that knows anything about music licensing and, you know, how things work, that would have been established before I even got anything on the platform. Oh, yeah, I mean, if they, if they're coming after you for like an ass cab or something like something like that, that that would have been a whole different thing. But and right. and yeah, don't get don't get it twisted. As far as what I was uh, <laughs> like, whenever I say conservative, like by modern standards, when I say that, like that's they that's not lumped in libertarian. Basically, I mean like everybody like, that's right, it, 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 <laughs> everybody that's right leaning. Well, no, it, it basically, if you're if you're not left to burn it, you're 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 uh, you're, you're cast aside there with the, with 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 the mark of of. Uh, uh, you know, non. Uh, well, I can't remember how they. they <laughs> what, what did they say in, in in John Wick there with that uh, <laughs> when he's outcast, basically? Oh, oh ex- ex- incommunicado. Yeah, excommunicado. Yeah, yeah. yeah. excommunicado. Yeah. There you go. And that's uh, you know, and and it's honestly, it's 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 a sign of the times and just how how far things have gotten pushed that way. And and our culture certainly values the almighty dollar over everything. Well, the the people that kind of pull the strings when it comes to like what gets through media wise and to pull you off streaming with, with the way that with the success you're having is it, it's outright criminal as far as I'm concerned. And actually but, that's, that was going to be my next question. So when it came to the streaming stuff, I found the song after you guys had posted it, I went on it, uh, Spotify downloaded the song. Yeah. Because well, Spotify, you can download it and save it to your whatever, but then they pulled it. Literally, not even twenty four hours after I downloaded. <laughs> so, my question is: is what when you guys found out about that? You know, obviously, what was your recourse of action? But also, like, how did that make you guys feel? Like, you guys were on Spotify, you guys were on iTunes, like all that stuff, and then all of a sudden they're like proverbial middle finger to everybody, and just. Well, like the thing is, it's like we're like built for this. We're, we've been doing this. We're built for this. We adapt and overcome. So it wasn't even a thing. Like literally after it happened, we had a meeting immediately. Calm as a cucumber had a meeting. All right, bet. What are we going to do? Like it went just like that. We weren't worrying about nothing. We're like, okay, we don't got that. But what can we do? And still for two weeks after we had our streaming taken away, we still kept on charting on Billboard. So what does that tell you? That pe- That people were still buying it. Then we then up until they pulled us, we were the number one hip hop song for a week straight, mm-hmm. and we were we're in the top ten with Mariah Carey, <laughs> and, and, and Mariah and, Carey, Smokey Robinson, Drake, The Weeknd, Eminem. Those are and, and oh and uh, Taylor Swift and Justin Bieber were amongst those. Dude, and the thing badass. is, and the thing is, and the thing is, it's like like how you said our message. I was, you know, in, in my part, I'm literally telling women to go work, get a job. I'm telling uh, uh, brothers to go uh, be doctors. You don't have to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? Be you dads. Can be, be something else. You, you know, they don't want to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm be, telling people to be, be good fathers. Dads. They don't want to hear that. <laughs> you feel me? Yeah. So, and uh, of course, and of that, course, you know what I mean? That part, I think, because we're both dads, I think that part hit me more because I've seen a lot of deadbeat fathers also, a lot of deadbeat mothers, but I've seen kids grow up without dads. I've seen kids grow up without moms. And, and, and it's, it's honestly like to hear it, that. I think that's it's a good message to get out there. Like, I mean, obviously, and it's it's honestly like like especially like <laughs> Zach mentioned, like he almost forgot where he was like coming just because like the uh, area that I live in here, and it's one of the things that like. I mean, you, you see, like, people talk about systemic issues of different things, and, like, one of the things that I, like, when you see people that, like, systemically don't grow up with values or don't grow up, like, like where they have this fictitious idea of, like, the streets, and, like, I literally had one time a five-year-old, I heard cussing out his his his, his little sister while they're walking, like, kindergarten, or I don't know, however, whatever age, I and mean, they, were, they were young, they were very young kids, and I go outside, I'm like, little boy, you need to not talk to your sister that way, he literally, like, he'd fallen on the ground, and I was worried about that at first, because I just happened to, like, I was flipping through stuff, and my security cameras popped up, and I saw this little kid liner, and I went to go outside, and I hear him cursing out his sister, 
And I go, little boy, do not talk to your sister that way. He points at me and says, I'm going to come back and shoot up your house. Now, this is like a, I mean, this kid was, he was like knee high to a grasshopper. You know what I mean? Like, good Lord. And all I could think of is, my God, what kind of, like, what is your family life like that you at that age are talking like that? You mean your favorite saying, three apples tall? Three apples. No, you're three apples tall. He was knee high up to a grasshopper. That's okay. different. That's that's a little bit smaller than you. Um, <laughs> I'm but that's sure. the thing. That's the thing. It's not the kid's fault. It's the no, upbringing it's that he came, that, came, that, that's, came up in. That's you know the I mean? first thing I thought is, my, my God, like, what is the household like that this little boy is growing up in? That make, like, he's, like, he's already at that young age. It's it's that fictitious, like the, the fake money, the fake, like, like it. it and I call it that. I say because it's it's the same shit that gets people selling drugs. They're out in the corner doing all the stuff that like. And I mean, I, I grew up in it. Like as far as I saw a lot of that shit growing up, especially like like where I'm at. Like we're in Mount Oliver, PA, which is like it's funny. You like, like that's literally this weird little niche in the middle of Pittsburgh where you can't leave it in any direction. You're not in the city, and it's just its own little. I mean, we we had you know, especially back in like the '90s was real bad with gangs, but now you, you you get this whole this new version of it, and it's just this regurgitation of that fake ass street mentality, of like that like everything exists in these couple blocks and nothing else in the world. Like that, no one understands like there's a bigger world. Like go be a doctor, go be a fucking cop, go be a marine, or, or join the. You know I mean, all the potential you could be so much more, and they just see this little thing right here, this right in front of them, because they think that's what what it, what it's about. Yeah, I call us the microwave generation, instant gratification, you know, um, and that's that's what we want. It, once again, it's, it's kind of what everyone always wanted. Right. It's just that it's just more prevalent because of social media. And and of course, that has been portrayed to be the cool thing and a way to go, um, especially when you have uh, so many uh, false facades being put on. I mean, think about it, man. We have a culture where only fans is a job now. Right. Like. Just think about that. Like, really? You, you and know, women, are, women are doing this. Like, women coming out of the woodworks. I have um, thought about making an OnlyFans if people are going to pay me. I'll just, like, walk around and videotape my life if, like, that's what they're paying people for. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Because that's what, you know, makes you the number one seller. Uh, but anyway, uh, all I'm saying is <laughs> you can kind of see what's going on. Like, people are dropping. You know, I see now where uh, I don't know if you saw the Black Lives Matter post. They posted for Martin Luther King Day. They had a black woman twerking on there, and they yes. said that was that was to empower women. Twerking it was yeah, no, it, no, in front of the Washington Monument. I think yes. I think I seen you post it up. I was like, "What the fuck is this?" Yeah, come on. So, no, now that you mentioned these, like, sorry, like, sorry, I, but like, no, that one, like, I'm just like. Uh, I, I, I get the swearing. I mean, I, I, introduce, I legit introduce myself. On the, sorry. I say my name's John. It's a four letter word. I use lots of them. But come on, be nice here. We got, we got, sorry, we got sorry, a Christian. Sorry, we got a good sorry. Christian I'm sorry, man. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, he got reach. Really but no, you're right, man. And when I saw that, and I just, and I already have my issues with BLM, right? Um, of course. But at the same time, I'm just like they have, they have been given such a huge voice. An influence on our culture, and when they promote garbage yeah. stuff like that, because it's something that can be sold, like we're talking, like you've been talking about, because it sells, it and, sells, and, and I'm just like, this is horrible, right? This, this is something I we have to fight against, especially if we want to get everyone back on track, like you know. Um, and and the reason I say this because I see what works and doesn't work. I've been through that, right? I've, I've seen my cousins who grew up in a certain situation. I grew up in this different situation. I've raised, I've seen how people raise their kids. I've seen what I do versus what others do. Oh yeah. my God. You know, I, you know why I've never been held at gunpoint by a police officer? Cause I'm not out committing crimes or being in situations that are going to make me look stupid. Like I'm, I'm pretty much, you know, you know, doing my own thing, not trying to cause any attention. It's like there's ways to avoid situations and just be productive in life without having to deal with all of the things that you call stressors, um, especially when you're talking about when they consider, you know, being oppressed in America as a black person. And I'm just like, bro, that, that, that's non-existent. I feel like that's self-inflicted. Um, and, and and that's why I hate about this whole narrative is people like us, you know, me and Summer, we, we voice it and we say, hey, there's a better way. But just because we say there's a better way, we're wrong, right? They, they don't want to hear from us. No, you're wrong, told for your sellout. All you're doing is supporting multiculturalism, white supremacy, whatever that is. 
Um, but uh, yeah, and, and, well, yeah. it's 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 anything they can't sell under the label that's trying to be pushed, and that's exactly what that what that means. I mean, that's like it's funny you you mentioned like something that actually to me I reflect on as a turning point. You mentioned you never had an officer point a gun at you. I did when I was younger, and it was again growing up with neighborhood folks that I didn't. You mean in in uh. It's, it was a learning experience for me when I was like, I want to say I was 16 or 17, about, fuck, I might be hanging out with the wrong people. Because whenever, whenever I, I get some random cop that drags me and my boy out of, out of his car, and I realize, oh, shit, they know this dude, and this happens a lot. I need to not be here anymore. You know what I mean? And it's... <laughs> might be time for a scenery change. Yeah, like, I realize, you know what, I'm not hanging out with the right people. Yeah, that's why I always go back to the scripture and I've kind of, you know, built my life around it, which has kept me out of trouble for the most part. You know, um, bad company corrupts good behavior. So that's why I've always been selective about who I um, introduce in my circle. Right. And once you get in my circle, it's hard. Right. First, it's hard to get in there. Right. <laughs> so, you know, Tim, Tim barely made it in. I'm putting it out. They barely made it in. Um, but uh, once, is that once because he's in, a Marine and you were in the Air Force? Nah, that's that's not what it was. Oh, okay. I was, I was just checking because I know that whole like well, yeah, inner service yeah, yeah, yeah. rivalry. I know sometimes the smart kids don't want to hang out with with with, with the oh. gun guys. I we I am so sorry. <laughs> nah, nah. I'll man. just sit here and eat my crayon. You know. Uh, <laughs> I you had one ready, dude. That uh, I keep them on me. <laughs> yeah. Like he, he he keeps a thirty round magazine loaded with crayons. He, he keeps this, is, this isn't a joke. Ask him. Tell him. Tell him. Yeah. Um. He has uh what, crayons to eat. He has crayons for bubble gum. This dude has crayons <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> Told you. That is fantastic. Oh, man, it's it's a good uh it's a good uh, gimmick to have, especially when yeah, we're around yeah, the that, people. That, that, and he he whips out crayons. They be like, "What are you doing?" I'll like, be hey, honest. Like like it's. it's it, that that's a pretty fucking strong pull. <laughs> you got the chewable crayon that, that, ready. No, that is that is like a hard flex. That, that period. is that it's is like that crayon. Like yeah, no, yeah. Like I like that. How marine am I? Right here, crayon. It said, "Tell me, Crayola, you're bitch." Uh, I don't know if you've seen the TikTok trends, but they'd be like, "Tell me you're a marine without telling me you're a marine." <laughs> crayon. Did you, did you see the guy on TikTok that was on the skateboard? Speaking of crayons, the guy on TikTok that was on the skateboard that had a 24-pack of Crayola crayons that was trying to do the whole uh, uh, the cranberry thing that the guy did with the skateboard where he was drinking the cranberry juice, but he did it with crayons. He was on a skateboard. And he was trying to eat a whole 24-pack of crayons while he was skateboarding. Now, that's impressive. I didn't see it. but that, I, I, it, it was amusing. It was, it was, it was amusing. I think nah, he actually I, ate like four actual crayons and then spit the rest out. Now uh, you, to- need, you need to talk to my boy Timmer. He'll hook him up. <laughs> now, now, Topher, uh, you, you touched on something a little bit there. Like a couple of things that, like, as far as um, like like one being being a father, but also being being a a, 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 a man that uh, follows uh, f- follows Christ. Can you just uh, maybe? Tell us here as far as maybe if you can give some advice to the audience or to people just in general as far as uh, your insights on, on 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 raising raising someone that way. Uh, like me personally, I, I got a I got a almost two year old. Like in a couple of weeks, I have a two year old, <laughs> and I, I, you know he was baptized, uh, but uh, I, I'm still trying to figure out how to work all this out myself. I'd like to hear even just your insights on that. Well, I got a five year old and. Uh- I got two girls, right? One's about to be two in July. So I guess I'm in the same boat. But uh, what I've done is um, just introduce them to God and what I do anyway, right? Um, I always tell people the biggest thing you could ever do as a father, especially with girls, is lead by example. Um, because what they're going to do is grow up and they're going to look for the guy their father was like. If they never had a father, they're going to look for a guy that's not going to be around. Like it, it, It's just it's ingrained in them un- you know, unconsciously. So what I try to do is show them like, look, I'm praying when, when we go to church, I bring them to church with me. I try to I try to tell them what's important on the surface. And, and when it comes to big issues, I just try to explain it and bring it back to the Bible as much as possible. I always tell people, you know, I don't have to go too much in depth, um, but I, I do try to uh, give them enough for them to go back and chew on. Um, but I think the biggest thing for them is to just to show them it's like, you know, because uh, even if. 
for instance, even if they don't choose Christ when they become an adult, right? Which happens. It's, it's the, the freedom, freedom of will, free, free, free will to do so. If they don't choose it, I still want to instill them values that you can maintain and possess regardless of your faith. And that's treat everybody like you want to be treated. Respect your elders, respect authority, um, defend yourself. You know, here's the Constitution. Here's all your rights. Uh, work hard, outwork the you know your competition, and you'll succeed. So all these um, values that no matter where you come from will make you successful in life. Um, so that's why I try to teach them and show them. Because right now, you know, people always ask why do what why do I do what I do is to conserve a, a future for my kids. So when they become when they become old enough to look back and say, hey, dad, when all that was going on with Trump and you know we was on the verge of becoming a communistic state a society. What was you doing that time? I don't want to tell them. Well, I was playing Warzone, getting my KD up. You know what I'm saying? I don't. I don't want to say that. I want to say I was out here creating music, trying to you know take back control of the culture. I was out here in the streets, going to protests, learning about different experiences, um, having the conversations, um, with, you know, having the debates and fighting for these rights. And that's that's what I do because you know, once again, all they're gonna do is say, train up a child. Uh, so as the way they should go. So when they become an adult, they should not depart from it. And that's all I'm trying to do. So I'm trying to not only tell them, but enforce it through um, what I do. That's awesome. Now, on a little side note of that, just you have a five-year-old, especially that and a two-year-old, but how in the heck do you keep a two-year-old still in church or quiet? <laughs> well, unfortunately for us, you know, um, our church we was going to actually, you know, it's, it's been a while because of COVID and everything. But the church we were going to, they have like a children's center. So we'll just take them over there, let them do their daycare and their learning. I, um, I, but, I'm guilty of that, too. <laughs> guilty of that. Yeah. All right. That, that's been my big Let's, obstacle right now. I'll tell you what. As, I was guilty of that until I actually, my mom took him to church, like actual church. And my mom called me. I couldn't go because I had to work. And my mom called me and she goes, yeah, he sat there perfectly fine, perfect little angel. And I was like. You are talking about my son, right? Because he can't sit still for more than five minutes. Different, different roles with Gmaw, man. No, absolute. That is absolute that truth. Is absolute truth. So, so, so what you're so now I'm feeling like he's telling me that maybe that the answer is that make my grams. That maybe we'll make my, my make my mom his grams take him might help there because that's been it's been a. Uh, <laughs> He's like, yep, nope, absolutely, yeah, no, because absolutely, th- that's, dude. That's been a legit thing now, especially, like, my wife was not raised religious. Like, I was I was brought up Catholic. Um, it was very important for, like, especially, like, my mom, my kid is hard on after he was born. That, you like, were brought up Catholic? Yes. That's why I swear so much and drink that so much. That explains a lot. That's <laughs> hence, <laughs> hence the three bottles of liquor sitting on the table right now. Um, yeah, it's, it, we, we have wine in church. It's how, I mean, it's how we roll. <laughs> um, but, but like, it's one of the things that's been like hard for me is, is trying to figure out like, like my wife, she's always been, uh, someone that it, like, she, like she had beliefs, she's spiritual necessarily, but she was not raised with like religion in her life. You know what I mean? So like, she kind of always like, especially when she, like me and her have been together along, like, like I just turned 38 last sat this past Saturday, my wife will be 38 this year. So we're very close in age. Like I met her a week before her sixteenth birthday. I really forget that we, you're that much older than yeah, me. Yeah, we started dating a week after her sixteenth birthday. We and we kind of did everything all 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 ass backward. Like we literally have a two year like we finally got married in twenty seventeen because I like we decided like it was like a line that said, like look we're having kids and like we're getting too old for this so we need to do this and I wasn't doing it without like like no ring no baby type of thing. I mean it was just. It's, I mean, not not saying we were doing everything right on paper before that, obviously, because I mean, we bought this house in '09. We were mortgaged way before we were married. <laughs> but nah, like, not, good. like, just, but just trying to like, kind of work towards like wanting wanting to raise my boy right above everything else. And that's a, that's a lot of like like what we you know, as far as like daddy brigade stuff. It's not you know, I mean, we we have our fun with talking about guns and other stuff, but like legit, like when it comes down to like our most important jobs ever, we both work for Homeland Security, but our both our most important job is being dads. So I'm just trying to figure out how in the heck I do this right. <laughs> yeah, no, that is that's one thing that I wake up every day and think like to myself. It's like okay, how can I be a better dad, and how can I not make my kid 
hate me at the same time while being a good dad. And, and, and like for me, it's a different level trying to get like my boy in church because well, yeah, like, you're. I mean, you have, you ever you been have to a two ca- years. I don't know if you've ever been to a Catholic service, but good lord, and I mean that like as far as. Like right when you think it's over, stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down, pray a few more times, fight, stand up, yeah. sit down, kneel a couple times. Oh, Catholic yeah. weddings are the worst. You know how many of those I've been to? Probably about as many as I have. I don't know about that. Like because half of my family's Catholic. All of my family's Catholic. Yeah, well. it's bad. Um, you know, it, it's actually funny though. Like, like literally, my uh, it was awesome. Just like growing up and that that. The first time my my son got to go to church, it was my niece's um, wedding because like my brother and, brother and I were twenty one years apart. So, um, yeah. can yeah. we get back onto their song? All right, I'm sorry. Yeah, you know, what? <laughs> damn, we, we're talking dad stuff. This is sorry. I'm sorry. Like I like me hearing Topher's like advice is, is a father, no, no, no. Like I think that's same here, and 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 not to diminish because honestly, the song is amazing. But I'm like. Just from the stuff. There was like, one thing. Your social media presence. Oh, speaking of her. Hold on real quick. Oh, I'm, I'm going to have her pop. Uh, speaking of the my, little guy. My, my, my little munchkin and my, my beautiful wife is coming to give me my Here. medication. So You take uh, your medication. No you, no, you lean in and point the baby like like, like S- Simba style. I want him on camera now. Hello. Say, 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 say hi to. T- oh, no. All right, honey, That's... you're on camera. The baby's not. There you go. Hey, hey look at the screen, buddy. <laughs> There's my little munchkin. What's happening? <laughs> Yeah, say hi to Topher and the Marine Rapper, huh? Hey, hi, buddy. He's like, uh, he's like, sure, what Dad. in the heck is going on right he's now? Like, we're looking, mommy? we're looking at computer screens. Yeah. Like, cool. Bye, bye. Say bye, bye. Go. Bye, buddy. Love you, little man. There you go. <laughs> but my, so, my my wife keeping me again being being the good woman she is pays more attention to the time, and I'm supposed to have my medication for my stomach problems. But oh yeah. The one thing, Topher, that you said, and it was a funny thing because my mom said this, and actually it was a elementary school teacher that said this, and when we were talking about hanging out with people and hanging out with the wrong crowd. So when I was in elementary school, I got, I was standing with a group of people. Somebody kicked a kickball, and it landed on top of the school. So, of course, they have to get a ladder, go up and get it off. And I got in trouble. Because I was standing with that group of people, and I was hanging out with that group of people. And a teacher told me, she says, I know you didn't do it, but she says, if you hang with the crowd, you go down with the crowd. And ever since then, like, my mom tells me that off and on, still at 34 years old, my mom will come up and be like, remember that saying? And I was like, yeah, yeah. And it's true, because... I've found myself in situations where it's like, mm, probably not a good idea, guys. I'm going to take off. Or, yeah, I'll catch up with you guys later because it's not worth hanging with the wrong crew. Yeah, because I also feel, too, that what people do around you is not even a full blunt of what they actually do. So um, if someone's smoking pot in front of me and it's in Mississippi where it's, like, illegal, right? <laughs> it's like you can go to jail for this. Imagine what they're doing when I'm not around. Like, I don't even know what you think you know about somebody. You still don't know enough. So I always assume what you do around me is a is just a, a, a small portion of what you actually do. See, see that? So, all, that almost so, makes you think of like the old Chris Rock like joke. Whenever he said, like, talk about dating. Like, when you meet someone, you're not meeting them. You're meeting their representative. <laughs> exactly. You're also, well, when you go to date someone, you're not dating just them or marrying just them. You're marrying the whole family. That too, um, that's that's a good which, one. Which can unless, be kind of scary unless, unless they have no family members or so. That's, but anyway, all I'm saying is, you know, I've just lived by that philosophy and that scripture, and and just allowed it to guide me to make sure that I kept good people around me. I also thought about this because um, I'm a little, I got ADHD and I'm a little adventurous, so I can go out and do dumb stuff without thinking about it. Right? I think I that's knew, pretty I much everybody. I I knew I had to find somebody to be anchors, right? Someone else that's a little bit more uh, uh, sturdy, more disciplined that I can kind of latch on to as well. So that's what I've been doing, um, uh, especially like Timmer and uh, D-Cure, right? Because I'll write a song once a year and I'd be like, yep, I've done it. But D-Cure would write a song, two songs a week and release them and put out five projects in one year. And I'm just like, bro, like, slow down you know but because of his 
you know, work, um, uh, his workload and speed, it forces me to keep up almost or at least attempt to. So that's why I like keeping people around like that. That forces me to uh, stay consistent, but also uh, work hard. So uh, just shout out to my boy D Care. Nice, nice. And that's what that's what we all do. Like we all do that. Like we all like sh- it's like iron sharpens iron, steel sharpens steel. Like I I know like. I bet not be slipping around any of these dudes at all because and like like I think we made the mistake one time you know what I mean got cut us slipping like oh I'm gonna just take it easy on a 16 nope uh uh-uh. uh never again you know what I mean so like cause uh me Topher and uh, D Cure we're in a group called Space Force so we're in a trio like kind of like you know like the Beastie Boys but we talk about spacey space spacey stuff that's but, like, that's kind of cool but like we like. We go at it like we're like trying our hardest every single time we rap together. So it's, it's kind of like, like like a concept group is like like almost like a concept album idea. Only like you're doing it as a, as a group with a with a whole vibe. Like kind of like, like a concept group, but it's still us. It's still us. We just use certain language. Okay, personally, so, like, so had... we'll, we'll we'll still be ourselves. Like I'll still be the marine. He'll still be you know Topher and like the smart one and stuff like that. And DQ will be the fast one and stuff. So we'll still be ourselves, but like we'll throw in concepts uh, that are fun. And we don't cuss either, so it's, like, kid-friendly and all that type of stuff. It's just a fun little uh, project concept group. Uh, But, like, at the end of the day, we're trying to challenge each other because we're trying to make the best possible music ever. That's what's up. Uh, I feel bad now that that – uh, Topher's gonna have to, uh, we're gonna have explicit next to this because of me and Zach messing us all up. You know, I'm just, like, it is what it is there. I'm sorry. (laughs) No, you good. Um, trust me, I've, I've heard worse. <laughs> um, you guys are good. I also tell people, you know, it gives me a chance. Uh, it's okay to show where you are. You know, we're all in the different levels of our spiritual walk or whatever relationship with Christ. Um, and what what is I always tell people, what is a cuss word, right? Um, because what we consider curse words, there's other bad stuff that just equally is bad to say, right? If I call you a flaming home, if I call you a flaming racist is that not just as bad as something you know what i'm saying so many things that i mean it depends unless the person deserves it i mean (laughs) unless the person is really a flaming racist and somebody lit him on fire yeah so i I feel like if someone's actually being you know uh to be fair if they're that racist they should be lit on fire probably i'm just pretty pretty much all all racists should be lit on fire yeah but that's a whole separate thing (laughs) yeah that's a whole nother show yeah you know uh, other show. But, you know, um, <laughs> I'm not Timber's, the judge or jury, so I'm not gonna. Timber's okay. like, nope, nope, not gonna do this. But yeah, um, so yeah, it's it's just been a, a fun experience. Like I said, you know, uh, we went in it with just fun, and now we're we're leaders of an entire movement. We we got so many people backing us. We have so many remixes that have came out. Um, so many people, like I said, re- reaching across the aisle. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee for Coffee or Die Media. Um, they put us in that magazine. Uh, I've had people. I think that's about the biggest we've had. But just uh, drinking bros, drinking bros. Yeah, drinking bros. Drinking bros. Yes. Um, we've been on some huge podcasts. We've had some huge interviews, and uh, you know, we we always make the joke. You know, Black Lives do Black Lives Matter. Like uh, when you talk about elevate Black voices, are you talking about all Black voices? Because no black media has reached out and said, hey. Well, you, I seen your happened. post today about that. Well, yeah, you know, I had to post it because it, it, I called out conservative media. Yeah, I when seen I, your I, post I, about that, and I was like, yeah. well, that, oh, that, oh, that's – that." Yeah. wow. That was one of the ones I saw on IG recently that I actually liked that I saw that they had – and I don't remember where it was posted or anything, just because it was like that, that kind of the, the scroll crack. I just flipping, flipping through everything, but it hit me like whenever I saw it, like it was like one of them street signs that would have been like BLM, but it said all Black Lives Matter, and that I'm like, I'm like, oh yeah, you mean like so like, I mean obviously we, we, we all know the, the the crazy stats as far as uh, if you're tra- treating stuff as triage as opposed to like 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 I mean police overreach. I mean, no one wants to see that. Obviously, that's that, that's obviously a problem on its own. If there, when it happens, when there's when there's like when there's cops not. I mean, and I'm, I was raised partially by like my grandfather, the 93 year old. Like he was president of the FOP here in Pittsburgh. He literally ran the, the union. I mean, so it was it was a big deal. But like when you have that as opposed to like murder rates, you know, what I mean, as far as like 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 the odds of, of a young black man being murdered, period. And then you take that against those police numbers, and that's a whole separate fucking problem. And it's a bigger—I mean, like frankly, I mean, like, like it's a bigger problem. 
Like, and it, it sucks. Like the, 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 that's like the odds of that happening. And that is the, like, just like you just in general, like, I don't want to see anyone's like n- no mother should have to cry over a fucking casket of, of a fucking baby. Or like, like the one time I ever saw my dad, like fucking like be fucked up. And it wasn't anything like obviously as tragic as a murder was my, my brother was dealing again, 21 years older than me. My dad was much older. Like I was, I was kind of like a surprise surprised because they didn't think because of his cancer problems he was going to be able to have kids but like i remember one point my 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 brother having some major problems there uh health wise and my dad doing a shot we're watching the steeler game and his eyes teared up and he started and he and he just said i don't want to outlive my son and that fucked me up so hard just seeing that look on my dad's face and and that is one of those things that that hit me to where like any like a mother should never have to see their dead baby. You know what I mean? Like it's the worst fucking thing. And I'm sorry, I keep with the f bomb, but I can't help it. Like right, now, like that just like that stuff hits me too hard. Yeah, are oh, you right? And once again, that's that's what we're here for. You know, we need to stop celebrating just bad behavior. Right? That's what it is. Whether I'm not calling anybody ratchet or however you want to be, but it's bad behavior, and we need to stop celebrating. And we need to start celebrating good behavior. Um, because once again. I've been there. I've been, and you know, we talk about, you know, uh, uh, what you call it, uh, acting white, right? <laughs> that that <laughs> black person acting white. They only say that when you don't do, you know, when you're not doing devilish things, when you're actually trying to be, you know, academically um, inclined and things like that. When you're trying to, you know, talk proper, then you're acting white. It's like, why is wanting better acting white? And then that's one of the things I thought was like so, so so gross about a lot of like the kind of that that modern movement is is like honestly I, I consider it a, a, a truly anti black movement to where you're gonna you're gonna call it like whiteism or whatever you like I can't remember how the the wording of it now but like whiteism is it is it whiteism uh, well, I don't even care what the fucking terminology is frankly but like where they literally like like where you have like sections of society saying that it's wrong for anyone to want to do better for themselves in any way. It's whiteism yeah. and white splaining. Or whites. Well, I don't give a fuck. Whatever the talk again. Again, the labels. The labels are meaningless to me at this point because it's it's kind of noise. Um, it's 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 a, it's sad because like like especially Topher, when I see someone like you like a, a, a good christian that wants like the best and all i could think of is like again you get back to like this again this fictitious street mentality that like like literally where they get these kids thinking about bullshit and i'm not saying black white any like it's not a color thing it's literally like it's it's a it's a social thing as far as just like honestly more neighborhood like said like where i'm sitting right now like like really where my ass is parked currently like they'd call this a black neighborhood and it's not about that and it's not a black thing it's not a like literally like you're yeah. either you're either for family or you're for like this fake money, fake street thing, and yeah. like and and that's it's once again is we have color coded values and that's what I don't understand. It's like wh- when when did this happen? And the fact that we continue to perpetuate this even within the black community is was wrong. It's self defeating, um, and we're never going to get to where we believe we should be, um, and we're never going to earn the respect we we think we should have if we continue down this path. And that's what we're here for. Like, once again, I'm just here, especially when I do politics, is to kind of offer that alternative perspective. Right. Because once again, when I was growing up, all you hear is one in three chances of going to jail. Um, You can't do this. You're going to be killed. Yada, yada, yada. You don't hear anything about a great how great America is, the chances you have to succeed if you put hard work in. All you hear is you're black and you have to work twice as hard. So you shouldn't you shouldn't do this. I'm like. Bro, that's not that's just not statistically true. Are there some areas? Yes, there may be some areas where there are more barriers than others. But let's keep it real. Right. It's not the entire America. It's not every person. It's not every white person. It's not this. Um, Can we can we just keep it real? That's my my issue I have with it, Um, because I know if someone trust me, someone told me, Chris, no matter what you do, you're um, you're not going to grow past five foot seven. I was like, dang, I guess I ain't going to even try to be a basketball player. Then. <laughs> that's, that's just out the window. Like, yeah, hell you know, of a linebacker, though. 
Yeah, yeah I can still possibly. I could have been Troy uh, Palomaro. I could have been that. You know, um, he was a safety. I think he was five he, eight. He, five, he, he he was a strong safety. And he was right right in that ballpark. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. By, by five eight five nine, I could have been something like that. But no, I'm. I ended up being a rapper. Like I feel like all rappers are short. Don't ask me why. Well, hold on. Musicians, singers. There's a lot of that in general. Like that's that, that's that's yeah. somehow a thing. You know what I mean? Since we're both rock guys, and I'm a big metalhead, Corey Taylor is short. He looked like Corey Taylor. Probably the, like the most like currently for the last maybe decade and a half, most prolific metal slash slash contemporary hard rock singer. He looks like he fell off a keychain. You know what I mean? But, but their necks are about this big. Yeah, like his neck, it's literally he goes straight from his shoulders, like the neck comes in and it goes straight up to his temples. It's all. <laughs> Yo, did mind. you hear what he said? He said, I can't believe you say he looked like he fell off a keychain. <laughs> he did. <Yeah. laughs> he did. <laughs> oh, man. Hey, wow. Corey Taylor, if you, you hear ever, this. You ever hey, see him shoulder to shoulder with was, the guitar players and Slipknot? Crit- crit- he, not mine. He's like, he, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, if, if Corey Taylor comes on here and starts hating. I will let him bitch slap me. It's fine. That's perfectly fine. As long as, I'm going to make him sign a guitar afterward, but he's going to bitch slap me first. I'm fine with that. Okay. Like, I can do that. Like, he's literally one of my favorite. Like, honest, like he's like the dude that made me, when I was a teenager, think it was okay because I, I, I have a similar vocal range as far as like that it's a baritone, which was never like a metal thing or a hard rock it was always you had to be really high or you had to be do all this shit that i can't do and then he came along I'm like oh shit you mean you can be good and do this stuff and like the range i can actually sing in like, he was transformative to me from that standpoint just as a singer because you had all them guys that come out like slipknot stone sour obviously both him but then like breaking benjamin and all these other bands were like they actually sang it like reasonable like levels for someone like me that has the range i have and like it was like okay to be like a baritone, like this weird kind of middle grounds thing. So anyway, so if I tell me fell off a keychain, he is short and he knows it. It's fine. <laughs> he gonna whoop your ass if he hears this. I hope so. You know what? I hope so. <laughs> I will take that like a man. I'll be proud to say Corey Taylor whooped my ass if he actually. <laughs> Yeah, fellas, uh, I gotta get going, man. No, I mean, hell, no, no, yeah, sorry. So, uh, yeah, we were actually we were gonna say we won the kind of like maybe final thing. If you guys could give us a, a few words on like literally anything in closing here, whether it be like the fatherhood anything, the music anything, at, like please being just, a better Christian dad. Like, like yeah, that that's that's something. Believe me, I've been trying to work on and trying to figure out. Like I'm a new dad. Like, I've been. A, uh, yeah, yeah. he's a new dad. I've been dad new a dad for seven years, and I'm. Still not. We're perfect. still trying to figure this stuff out. So, please, well, you know, and, you know, Abraham you almost it. sacrificed his son, so you can't be as bad as him. So, you, I think you're on the right path. You know, <laughs> well, listen, Proverbs. That's all I can tell you. Proverbs is where is that man? It just gives it to you straight. It gives you all the daily things that you can do, and that's why I like to use as well. Um, so I stick in Proverbs, and once again, um, whatever you think, you know. And anything, just show love. Just be loving. Just be love itself. And that's what I try to be. Um, and love is discipline at the same time. You know, it is what it is. They may not understand what's going on at the moment, but trust me, when they get adults, like we all have become, we always look back and like, dang, that's why I couldn't do that. Or that's why my mom was acting out there. This They're going to figure it out when they become adults and have kids. Uh, other than that, man, look, just continue to listen to the, the song. The music video will be dropping soon soon and, <laughs> ish uh, soon very ish soon. <laughs> very soon so make sure you check it out you know the patriot uh, once again we we're still on billboards uh we were charting before they removed us from streaming platforms but you can purchase a copy from the marine rapper.com you can go there you can get a uh, hashtag free to patriot merch um you can get a signed physical cd copy of the song not an album but just the song itself it will be signed by me and Timmer, and we get that sent out to you guys. Very limited copy, so if you want one, go ahead and grab one. But if you want a digital copy, that's available as well. Cool. Timmer, cool. you got anything to enclose in there? Definitely make sure okay. everybody's yeah. using the hashtag. No, that's that's basically, yeah, uh, ev- let everybody uh, know to use the hashtag, hashtag free the patriots. Um, uh, everybody, if you're looking for me, uh, music, collaboration, stuff like that, you can find me everywhere at The Marine Rapper. Make sure you just keep on uh, playing uh, The Patriot. Tell your friends about The Patriot. Let Make sure everybody knows about The Patriot. It's family-friendly, so you can play it in front of your kids, have your kids singing it. If you, if you do any videos or anything, make sure you send it to us. We share them. We make sure we share that content because we love to show love to those who show love to us. So thank you for that. And um, yeah, just look out for that um, that Patriot video. It's going to drop within the next 
say 24 hours. So you, oh, you'll wow. see it up there. Nice. So yeah. that, I feel, very, I, I, very, I, I, very soon. I feel, very like, soon. I feel like we just got like the Easter egg of the week. No, there no that's why I said that's, soonish. I kind right. of figured that. All right. So, so. Yeah. You actually, you guys actually got the first announcement. So, all right. Yeah. So, so, Hell so, yeah. so you heard it first here. We're going to make sure this actually, I'm going to not be a slacker now and make sure I get this like uploaded back in through the podcast system all tonight. Um, do me a favor. Could you, uh, Tim, or could you just text Zach the exact hashtags for things? I want everything embedded in the video. Oh, for sure. For where people can get this. I'm definitely going to be ordering a copy. I want a signed copy now of the single. Um, so I'll make sure, I'm going to make sure I order mine too. But hey, we're, we're, we get all that linked. Uh, we'll get all that linked into our stuff. I, like, seriously, Topher, Timmer, thank you guys. Big thank you so guys for coming, coming on tonight. On. This is such big news. And, and honestly, like, I really want this to be in the most Christian way a giant middle finger to all them streaming services and everything else. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's a middle cross. I don't but, know. You know what? Wow. Since, <laughs> since I'm the. You have to understand, since like, I, the, since I'm kind of on the line, I grew up Christian. I grew up in a church, but it, we won't get into that I, I now. But with some, like, kinda, like, like, this I'm, is I, the middle finger. I'll give the middle finger for you guys both. To, you can't. <laughs> don't, to, to, I don't think Tover wants you to get in his name. So, sorry, we, we were but, doing we were doing so good, guys. Sorry, I'll give the middle. I'll give. We're the, doing so good. We almost. It was like yeah, one of those Joe was, Biden endings. Like, yeah, we, we almost. Will, we was almost there. Yeah, we was almost will, there. I, <laughs> But yeah, I'll, like no, that's that's it pretty much. I'll send it to you guys and make sure if you guys have any clippings and stuff, some clean clippings and stuff that we could share. <laughs> yes, definitely send that no, to, we yeah, with no with no swear words. Yeah, yeah no, we will make sure to, um, we have some. Send it to us and then we'll you know, the little snippet and then we'll reshare it and uh I'll give you guys some yeah, that part will take a little more time because I will have to run that back through this actual studio and stuff and, and yeah, that, won't that take part that long. But, but I'll, I'll get I'll get you guys some some stuff to put up if uh, anything you would want, especially uh, maybe I'll just yeah just like, a good a good snippet or whatever six uh, lower lower than uh, sixty seconds and then we'll, we'll yeah, share it absolutely don't, don't, All right. yeah just a good quote um and then we'll give you guys a shout out and we just really appreciate you and but thank you we, guys for coming on because I sure being in the podcast industry and knowing now. Because my Facebook page got banned and watching you guys get censored, I think it's very unfair. And I think that now is the time for everybody, not just individuals, but everybody that's been banned, that's been, you know, censored to stand up and say enough's enough. Like we've had enough. We are now going to start speaking out as a group and enough is enough. Facts. Exactly. Let's do it. So, again, guys, thank you very and much again, for coming it's, it's, on. It's all about, like, and I mean this in the truest sense, not not like the the fake media version of it, but I mean, like, as far as it's all about teamwork and unity, and like, let's like, literally, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I, teamwork I, make, yeah, teamwork just, just makes the you. dream work. Yeah. Teamwork makes the dream work. Thank you guys so much. It's been a true honor. Um, I I can't wait to see you guys. Like, 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 blow this up even bigger than it's going right now. I can't wait for the video. We are so I, excited. I would love to see you guys at number one. Probably, I would love to see you guys at number one by the end of the month. That's only a week away, but I think we could. I think we I think could help you do it as long as as long as you guys keep on spreading the word like everybody else. I, I know we'll make it there, um, and we appreciate every little, uh, every little just referral. It no, it's not it's not too big or too small. So we love every bit of the publicity. So thank you. Absolutely. Yep. Yep. Thank you, fellas. Thank you guys right. again for Peace coming y'all. on. All right. Hey, hey, y'all. Uh, just again, thank you, Topher. Thank you, Timmer. Uh, guys, I got nothing else. Um, Zach, the tactical gnome. JP, the armored chef. Daddy Brigade podcast. Out. out. Peace.